Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. Okay, you're back with me, Cool Dude Clem. And today, I thought I'd experiment with vacuum tubes, or valves, or thermonic valves, or whatever you want to call them. So, I must experiment! Anyway, I've got this one here, which is a Pentode. It's quite an old one, actually, from 1954, I think, so it's quite old. But I think it still works. Now, as you can see, I've put different wires on it. I've got this, um, got these two thick wires here. They go to the filament. This white wire goes to the anode. This one goes to the control grid, and this one goes to the screen grid. And of course there's no suppressor grid connection because that's internally connected to the cathode, which is also the filament. Anyway, I'm going to turn on the filament now. Seeing if I can make out a glow. I can just about see it. There's no way the camera's going to pick it up, but I can just about make that out. Now bear in mind all that I've got connected right now is the filament. If I probe the filament voltage, for some reason it's not reading on the meter. Let's try to get that in there a little bit better. Okay, there we are. Almost one and a half volts, which is right for this valve, or two. What do you think I should say, valve or two? I'm just going to say valve. Anyway, strangely enough, we get a negative voltage. I'm just going to connect this up. I found this out by pretty much by pure accident that we get a negative voltage coming out of the control grid. Anyway, I've got a pretty good idea of why that is happening. So anyway, this is the tube. It's got this kind of weird dual filament thing going on. I don't know what that's all about. Anyway, this is pretty much how it's wired up. We've got both of those connected up to the 1.5 volts and the, where they both meet is connected to the ground. And I think what's going on is when this is on, there's like a cloud of electrons all around it like this. Loads and loads of electrons right there, and some of them just jump up to that control grid, and we get a negative voltage there, because electrons have a negative charge. Okay, well, I've got it in a little circuit now. Over here is the power supply for the uh, high voltage parts. It's nothing more than just a transformer, rectifier, and then filter, made out of a couple of capacitors and a choke. Taking a look at the circuit here, this is basically how it's set up. We've got the high voltage there, which is about nearly 100 volts. Goes into the cathode, I mean, goes into the anode through this 15k resistor. And into the screen grid through this 150k resistor. Now, I'm quite a tube noob, I don't really know much about these. Now, I should, if I'm right, nearly have the full supply voltage at the screen grid. So if I take a voltage measurement right now, you can see it's not exactly what it should be. It should be at least twice that, and it isn't. Measure the actual supply voltage itself. We have almost 95 volts. And at the anode, I can just get that on there. 56 volts. And now I'm just going to connect up the control grid so you can see the voltage coming out of that. Oops, slipped off. Let's put that back on there. Move the lights out of the way. You can see that's dropped quite considerably. It's now only about half a volt. Okay, so now I've got the meter connected to the anode without me actually having to hold on there. I don't know if you can make that out. Of course, it would help if the camera would actually focus. It's a very small resistor. That 15k resistor. Very small resistor. But it's what it says in the data sheet. Now, if I touch the control grid wire, as you can see, I'm obviously making that more negative because the voltage climbs up. 
And I don't know if you noticed that, but when I let go of that wire, it went up to the full voltage and then stayed there for a little while while coming back down. So I don't know why the voltage goes up just after I release it and then goes down. It didn't do it that time. Let's try that again. There we go. So I don't know why there's that sudden burst of voltage going up just before it starts to fall back down again. Okay, I now have the control grid connected to a negative voltage supply. And I'm not really getting much of a voltage change. There's about minus 1.2 volts going into the control grid right now. I'm going to increase it. Okay, we're about negative 6 volts now. As you can see, the voltage is increasing as it goes more and more negative. Right around 18 volts, negative 18 volts. We're getting the full voltage at the anode now. Okay, so I've changed that 150k resistor to a 1.5k. So I now have a 1.5k resistor between the power supply and the screen grid. Now, as you can see on the meter, because that's the voltage I'm measuring right now, we have about 94 volts. Okay, so I'm now measuring the voltage at the anode. And now, as I vary the voltage on the control grid, get a much bigger change. I can go all the way down to about 8 volts. To about 96 volts. That's about negative 18 volts on the control grid right now. And we're getting 96.4 volts. So, that tube is basically just not letting anything through it at this point. If I turn the voltage down, now that tube's become really conductive. There's electrons flowing through there like there's no tomorrow. I'm just going to unplug that. Safety first. Anyway, that's got me thinking. Now I wonder if I connect a voltage, if I connect something like a phono or tape head or a microphone here, I wonder if we can get any amplification out of that. I'm going to find out. So this is the idea I've had. As you can see, replace that 150k resistor with a 1.5k. And to bias the input grid, I've got a 1 mega ohm resistor connected to negative 8 volts because that seems to be sort of midpoint. And I'm going to put an audio signal in here through a 1 nanofarad capacitor. And the output comes along here through this capacitor here and out to there. And this resistor, which I haven't decided on the value yet, will just bleed off the high voltages so the high voltages don't get into the any audio equipment I might connect up to it and mess the whole thing up. So, I'm going to build this circuit and see if it works. Okay, well here is the circuit built. Now I'm sure at the moment you can hear a hum in the background. That is because... That circuit is connected to the tape recorder that's recording this right now. The output comes along this wire here. And if I could just get the cameras... And it's going into the input right there. Now I've checked that there's no high voltages on that wire before I plugged it in because that would be a very stupid thing to do if there was high voltages on there, so I'll check that that was all safe. I have made a few changes to the circuit. Now remember I said that I hadn't decided on the value for this resistor here? Well, I decided to use 1 mega ohm, and the other change I made was instead of using a 1 nanofarad capacitor here, I'm using a 2.2, and I'm using a 10 mega, 10 mega ohm resistor right there. And this wire here, if we follow it along, if you can follow it along, excuse the mess, that is going to there, so if I, if I touch that, now I'm going to turn off the filament, which is connected to the power supply here, and also this provides the negative 8 volts for the BIOS, I mean BIOS. See? Absolutely nothing now. 
Turn the filament back on. So let's connect something to that and see what we can get. Okay, well I thought because this circuit has such a high input impedance I would get out the old crappogram, which has a ceramic pickup. The output of the pickup is connected right there into the circuit. So now if I play a record through it, But I think that's about the best I've heard this sound, um, well, ever, and that's not actually the best sounding record either. Well, I don't... Hang on, better stop the record, because last time I recorded this you couldn't hear me over the music. But I don't think that sounds too bad, considering that this has a very crappy ceramic cartridge in it. And the tube that I'm using as the preamp has probably seen better days. Anyway, I'm going to prove that this is the that that is going through the tube now. I'm going to start the record playing again. And while doing so, I'm going to disconnect and reconnect the filament. That's the filament disconnected. Now I'm going to reconnect it again. I'm sure you can hear a little bit coming off the actual needle itself. Just doing that again. Don't wait then. Anyway, that's just about it because my camera battery is just about dead now. So I'll see you next time and until next time, goodbye. Cleaning to earn an honest bump 
for a nosy parker it's an interesting job now it's a job that just suits me a window cleaner you would be if you can see what i can see when i'm cleaning windows honeymooning couples too you should see them bill and coo you'd be surprised at things they do when i'm cleaning windows in my sky that we look upon should tumble and fall, or the mountains should crumble to the sea. I won't cry, I won't cry, no, I won't a tear, just as long, stand by me. What you want me to do? 